Welcome to this week's episode of Lightning Struck Pages. I'm Todd. And I'm Jared. And today we are talking about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, page 378. Let's get started. Ron had pierced the glass in both windows. Riddle's eyes were gone, and the stained silk lining of the locket was smoking slightly. The thing that had lived in the Horcrux had vanished. Torturing Ron had been its final act. The sword clanged as Ron dropped it. He had sunk to his knees, his head in his arms. He was shaking, but not, Harry realized, from the cold. Harry crammed the broken locket into his pocket, knelt down beside Ron, and placed a hand cautiously on his shoulder. He took it as a good sign that Ron did not throw it off. After you left, he said in a slow voice, grateful for the fact that Ron's face was hidden. She cried for a week, probably longer, only she didn't want me to see. There were loads of nights when we never even spoke to each other. With you gone... He could not finish. It was only now that Ron was here again that Harry fully realized how much his absence had cost them. She's like my sister, he went on. I love her like a sister, and I reckon she feels the same about me. It's always been like that. I thought you knew. Ron did not respond, but turned his face away from Harry and wiped his nose noisily on his sleeve. Harry got to his feet again and walked to where Ron's enormous rucksack lay yards away, discarded as Ron had run toward the pool to save Harry from drowning. He hoisted it onto his own back and walked back to Ron. He clambered to his feet as Harry approached, eyes bloodshot but otherwise composed. I'm sorry, he said in a thick voice. I'm sorry I left. I know I was a... a... He looked around at the darkness, as if hoping a bad enough word would swoop down upon him and claim him. We are finally destroying Horcruxes. We are. We are. This is the first one that has ever been destroyed. No. This is the third one. No, wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. The diary's been destroyed. uh, Harry destroyed the the diary. Dumbledore destroyed the ring. True. But this is when we first find out. This is out. the first one that the trio has right. destroyed. Well, yeah. Which everybody destroys a different part of the Horcrux. Nobody ever. No, no person, no same person has destroyed two Horcruxes. Except Terry. What was the other one he destroyed? Well, actually. Hermione destroys the cup. Right. Um, he kind of destroys the diadem, well, sort of. Technically, Crab destroys it. Technically, I guess it should have been. But, it should have been Malfoy. Yeah, in the in the movie, he does because he because throws he it, kicks it back into the fire. Yeah, but he drops but it. But in the book, he sees it flying through the air in the fire. Goes, swoops down, catches it up in his arm. They right out of the room of requirement, but then by the time they get out, it had already done the damage and it was oozing. Yeah. And had been destroyed. Yeah. So. I mean, it would have been nice if Ron could have destroyed it. Not Ron. Malfoy could have destroyed it. Neville destroyed Nagini and Voldemort destroyed the final piece. Yeah. Which I think is fitting. Like poet poetically, Harry destroys the first, Voldemort destroys the last. Yep. That's true. Very true. Yep. This it's also one of those pages that's just kinda awkward. Cause it's just like this awkward moment of like bros like talking about like oh they're trying to show the, feelings you know but they're they trying don't. yeah uh, they're like oh, i gotta be tough it's like, i gotta be tough I'm, it's like dude man you know i i i, I thought you knew she was, i just i didn't ever like her like that man you know yeah. she's like my i sister. think this was the the moment that 
any Hermione shippers yeah. lost all hope. If it wasn't gone before then, I think there was a problem. But Well, I mean, this is where it was 100%. There is not going to be any Hermione. Yeah. I mean, it's very clear. It's the definitive moment where it's strictly said. Mm-hmm. That it's like, hey, Harry's not interested like that. Hermione's not interested like that. Leave them alone and yeah. let them make their own choices. Yep. Harry's got Jenny. It's it's Harini. And then, but... Harini? What would their word be? Henny. I guess, yeah. That's probably... Henny or Jerry? Gary. <laughs> Yeah, the Harry and uh, Jenny. Well, it would be Jerry. Jerry, yeah. Harry and Jenny's is Gary. What would it be? Harani? I'm I'm sure they have names, and they I'm sure they're better than what we're coming. Yeah, up with. we'll have to look those up. Ronioni. Ugh, that sounds like a really gross pasta dish. You want some Ronioni? Her her Hermionald. Hermio. Ew. <laughs> Hermonald. Hermonald. I don't know. <laughs> They never really talked about girls. I mean, they have the book that Ron gives him at the beginning of this book, like yeah. how to woo girls, and then you see that he's doing all the tactics in that book on Hermione. Yeah. And you're like, all right, right why is he trying to impress Hermione? Like, something's oh, up we, there. We already knew. We well, already knew. I mean, it's... Especially with the movies, it shows it a lot more yeah. that Ron and Hermione kind of had a thing going. I feel like in the books, it was still a little more understated. I think it was pretty obvious in uh, Order of the Phoenix. In Order? In... Maybe not. No, not Order. Half-Blood Prince, it definitely was. Well, yeah, the jealousy of... Ron and uh, Hermione, uh, Ron towards Hermione with Cormac and yeah. Hermione with Lavender. Yeah, so it, like it I starts mean, it to become obvious. more obvious by then, but yeah. it's he also pretty much almost straight up says it at the beginning, um, in that he says, uh, "If only I would have had this book last year, I would have known how to get rid of Lavender and get started with." And then doesn't finish his sentence. Yeah. Well, and then also in the sixth book, it's not as obvious as they do in the movie. Yeah. With the love potion, when she smells fresh cut grass, fresh parchment, and then she cuts off. And we're supposed... Like, in the movie, it's just like, toothpaste. Which doesn't make any sense, because we don't have the scene before it, like... In the burrow, where Ron has toothpaste on his face. True. Yeah. You know. Because I think she also says, like, I don't remember in the books if she does say, like, two, and, like, it's, like, T-O-O, and you're supposed to be, like, is she saying toothpaste? I... Yeah, I'd have to relook. I can't remember. But you also have to think, she's also... It's one of those double things, because it's like, oh, is, she, is it a relation to Ron, or is it just because her parents are dentists? Never thought about that. I forgot. They're dentists. No. Who knows? But that's not important. It's We're talking about relationships here. So, we, we destroyed a Horcrux, and Ron's hiding his cries. Yep. Harry's trying to apologize. And, like he's just not yeah. apolog- he's he's more of trying to tell Ron that he forgives him. Right. And it's like, dude, you're you're integral to this group. Like look, we couldn't have done this without you. Yep. I would have drowned myself in the lake. Yep. Um but then Ron in his own way for like s- apologizes. Yeah. Yep. You basically Which- he basically was just trying to, you know, call himself a git. Yep. <laughs> Which, the later scene, I think it's like the next page, is a really good scene between Harry, uh, Ron and Hermione. 
Yeah. Because Harry has to keep pa- casting Protego between them. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, pretty... Hermione is... I mean, we do remember her birds. Like, she's... Yeah. She she holds a grudge. Yeah. But it's, it's a good scene. It really shows how much Harry and Ron do care about each other. Mm-hmm. Like... It's just... It's... It's a very real scene. Yes. Like, between two friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. And, like, because, you know, the, it was... The the Horcrux was trying so hard to stop Ron that, like, it's not even, like... They destroyed the Horcrux, but they're not even really, like, excited about the fact that they it hasn't... It hasn't Hit set, them yet yeah. that they just destroyed a Horcrux. Oh, yeah. Because they're still dealing with the... Mm-hmm. fallout of what they saw yeah so and now they have the sword so they now that they can the destroy any horcrux that they figure out which they don't at this point know where the cup is but that's all they have left they have the cup they know the snake and they have they don't know where the diadem is right because they don't figure out where the cup is until malfoy manor right because they know something's hidden in Malfoy Manor. Or right. something's hidden in Gringotts because Bellatrix got very scared. Right. So. Yep. That, yeah. Let's see. Anything else on this page? Not really. I mean, yeah. it's three Horcruxes down, four to go. Yep. Cup, diadem. Seven, another seven. Yeah, I still and I still just think this is, it's it's, it's such a good scene. I will say I thought the movie did pretty good with this scene. Oh yeah, I thought the movie did very well in depicting the scene. Um, Even though it was kind of controversial. Yeah, I I mean I but it, it I was don't only contro- it, it was only controversial because it looked like. Emma Watson was naked. I mean, they were supposed to appear to be silhouette and... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how it's described. Yeah, but it was controversial because it was a kid... People brought their kids to the movie and there's a naked girl on the screen. Pe- Not that it showed people, anything. People took she, kids to, well, to Deadpool and his thing was hanging out. So, yeah. you know... But the thing was, is like they even... like. Had, they had to come out and say, no, when we filmed this, she was not naked. She was wearing clear bra straps. And, like... Yeah. It just... We made it look like she was naked. She was not naked. Because that's yeah, what they Emma were worried Watson about. Is mm-hmm. Emma Watson is posing naked in the movie. Uh, no. Emma Watson would not do that. And I, I... I read about that after the movie, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I would remember a naked Emma Watson. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it was a very good scene because it's just a good combination of, like, action, emotional kind of. Well, and this was and this was definitely and... one of those like, especially with the movies, it was a weird like the one thing that I would when they first announced, oh, we're gonna split the Deathly Hallows into two movies. I was mm-hmm. like, where are they going to split this? Yeah, because there's not really a good splitting point. Not really. Because, like, this would be where I would think to split it. But See, this was... is where I initially thought. I thought it was going to be right here. But at the same time, it's like, but this isn't a good spot. Because It'd just it be just be like... Like, you have the main climax at the beginning of the movie, almost, when they break into the ministry. Mm-hmm. And then you have sad, 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 like, because Ron gets splinched, then Ron leaves. Then you get the sword, destroy the Horcrux... And that's it. Yep. And it's like, what? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the way they ended up splitting it worked very well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I originally I was like, is this? Are they gonna start here? That's all I could think of. Yeah. Um, just because that's pretty. I mean, it's right but there even, in the middle. It, it's but it's still really weird because like the biggest scene, which is the ministry scene, was at the beginning, and then it just kind of 
like you didn't have as much of a climax. You had like a small duel where they escape Malfoy Manor. But this movie really is meant to be watched back to back. It is. Um because they don't even really recap the movie at the beginning of the next one. It's just it goes right into the next movie and right. you're like, "All right." Well, and also you've got the fact that I mean, Deathly Hollows is not it's it's really not just action 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 all mm-hmm. the time. Um it's a lot, especially the first half it's a lot of information building. Like yeah. it's it's learning about the Horcruxes, you know, trying to figure out more about Voldemort, learning more about learning the Deathly Hollows, you know, yep. um, and dealing with all of that. You know, there's it's kind of slow at times. Yeah, in its action. Yeah, so. Especially in the beginning, and well, because it's a in lot the first of, half. Like, so in this book, it's a lot of lore and yes. mystery of trying right. to figure out what is Dumbledore trying. Why did Dumbledore give us these three items? Yep. And so, in that respect, it's that's why some people I think get a little bored by part one, just because it is really slow. Because it's trying yeah. to do all of that building mm-hmm. part without a lot of action. So well, I guess there is another action scene in there. It's the Christmas scene with the uh, uh, in Godric's Hollow. Yep, yep. Which in the movie that was it was so confusing on what was going yeah, on. Yeah, it was really hard to <clears throat> follow because. They didn't look like I thought the I don't remember them being townhouses that were like wall to wall. Yeah, but then they bust through a wall and they're in a, a baby nursery, room. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, what? Yeah, that was it was really confusing on that aspect. But maybe Bethilda Bagshot's house was a townhouse. Maybe I just can't remember, and I would have to pay attention when like yeah you actually go in, but. I was very confused by this scene. Well, I think it's... And it's so dark, and it's hard yeah. to keep up with Nagini, and it's just... It's very difficult. Yeah. Which, in the book, it's really, like, confusing, because you're flashing between that scene and Voldemort... Seeing the scene... Seeing, well, seeing the scene through, through Nagini's, Nagini's eyes. eyes. yeah. But at the same time, both Harry and Voldemort flashing back to the night that it all happened in Godric's Hollow. Yep. So you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what is happening? And it's supposed to be a disorienting scene. Yeah. It, well, it does it. It does it very successfully. Yeah. But it's definitely one that didn't translate well to screen. Yeah. But also, the first time I watched this movie was when it... Well, at least the first part. I watched the, the first 38 minutes of this movie leaked. Like, the day before. Oh, okay. So I watched the first 38 minutes of it before it actually had come out. Oh. Yeah. All right. And then when the part two came out, I watched the Russian version that had leaked online two days before it came out. So I watched the entire Deathly Hallows part two in Russian. Did you learn any Russian? Not really. But, like, I understood what was going on. Like, some of the jokes got past me because you know i don't speak russian um but like i knew what was happening right because i knew the story well enough but it was just it was kind of funny because like it's like i watched it before everybody in russian well you know you gotta do what you gotta do when you want to watch harry potter yep and then i literally watched it two days later in a uh drive-in nice nice all right well i think that's it yeah deathly hallows Page 378, three Horcruxes down, four to go. Yep. We got the sword back. All right. I do. If you are listening to us on podcast services, make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Marvelous Marauders, where every Friday 
we do our movie reviews. Right now, we are working through Fast and Furious. Yep. That series. Getting ready to watch Fast 9. Yep. We are also doing Ghostbusters. Getting ready for Ghostbusters Afterlife. A lot of good ones coming out. Yeah, a lot of good movies. (laughs) We better get good movies coming out. We need some, any movies. Yeah. So, make sure to check that out. And also, Mondays, we'll have catch-up videos for all sorts of TV shows that have, that are coming out. Look forward to eventually getting Loki. Yep. And if you are already watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe so we know you're watching. And you'll be able to see all of our videos on your subscription page. And make sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when those videos get posted if you don't like going to your subscription page. So, without further ado, Jared... Say your stuff. (laughs) Y'all, just keep reading. You never know when lightning might strike. All right, we'll see you next week.